and welcome to Legal Affairs. My name is Diamond Liddy, and I'm the public defender of the 19th Judicial Circuit. We are going to be talking about some really, really cool initiatives going on in our community. And uh, I have two old friends uh, that actually have been on the show, not old in age now, right? We've been talking about that. No, right. but, but have have been... We've been friends for years because we grew up in the community and been doing different things in the community for years. Uh, Monica Jacobson. Uh, good morning, Monica. How are you? She is the project coordinator of the Ignite Youth Alliance and other things uh, that we're going to be talking about. And then, of course, Teresa Bishop. How are you, Teresa? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing uh, wonderful. She's the, the executive director. So yes. let's, let's start with some background. Let's start with you, Teresa. Tell us a little bit. Uh, you've been in this community for quite some time, I and uh, tell us what you're doing now, but tell us what you've been doing. Well, yeah, um, thank you for that, and thank you for having us on the show. <laughs> of course, um, I'm the executive director for the Roundtable of St. Lucie County, and Ignite Youth Alliance is one of our initiatives. You know, we've been around for 25 years. There's over 30 uh, leaders that are at the table. You're one of our board members. <laughs> Um, for us to work on issues together to serve youth and families in our community. So we are united uh, leaders for youth. And, and before, um, because some of our viewers may not know, we, we do obviously, but the round table, you kind of gave a brief description, but yeah. how, how was the round table formed? Um, how long has it been going oh, on? What, what's the core idea of it? Well, you know, we got together, oh gosh, uh, over 25 years ago, but I was we solidified. Say, we just celebrated yeah. our 25 years of oh. being in existence last year, which is a wonderful thing. We meet every month except for, you know, vacation months. Right. Um, and we've been working together to address um, youth issues from substance abuse to right. gang violence to uh, depression and mental health. So we run, we work together. and. The main thing is that we um, make decisions about what's going to help our entire community strengthen our net for our youth and families in the community. So um, we, we really are a convener. We convene um, uh, um, experts in our community around different subject matters to discuss various issues, and one of which we uh, applied for a grant um, a few years back for the Ignite Youth Alliance because um, gang violence was a, a real issue in our community and sure. we've made a considerable number of strides in that area. And, but, and yeah. I want to talk about that because you've got some yeah. good numbers yeah, to we share. Do. Yeah, but, we do. you know, through the years, I have, I have to give you all a big shout out. I mean, the round table has um, addressed the, the needs and the issues of our community yeah. where they um, deal with our youth and our children, and have really um, done some really cool things and made a difference um, to reduce recidivism, to reduce arrests, to reduce, to to bring, to, to help the children of our community, Absolutely. especially those who, who really need it. Absolutely. Uh, Monica, um, tell us about you. So uh, thank you for having us on the show. Um, I am a transplant to uh, St. Lucie County, but I've been here for the last 11 years. And where, where before that? Uh, I'm originally from Norway, and I came to the United States when I was uh, 27 to go to college. And I lived in Washington, D.C. for 12, 15 years, actually, before I got here. So I got a, a interesting background because I've worked in... Uh, international affairs in, in uh, diplomacy and uh, community organizing and, and um, projects up in D.C. And when I came to Florida and this project um, was uh, initiated, it was just like the perfect match for me um, and my skill sets to, to come and do that. I'm, I'm just in awe of the, of the round table of what they do and, and the job that I get to do with the youth uh, in St. Lucie County. Well, now, so. you didn't, Ignite Youth Alliance has been, and we're going to get into that in a minute, but it, it, how how long has that been going on? But you were here before that, correct? Yes, I was. And uh, Ignite Youth Alliance was formerly called Restoring the Village Youth Initiative, and it came out of a, uh, really, a community movement led by Larry Lee 
in 2014. Uh, well, the right, community right. came together because of some really um, terrible murders and just long-standing violence in the community. And he mobilized uh, community leaders to go around and find what are some comprehensive strategies uh, for dealing with gang violence. And like Teresa mentioned earlier, uh, the Fort Pierce Police Department uh, received a federal grant. I was going to say, so there was right. some money behind oh, that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that grant allowed them to hire me as the project coordinator. And from there on, we uh, implemented a um, evidence-based strategy called the Comprehensive Gang Model that's developed by um, the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention in the Justice Department and supported by the National Gang Center. So since 2015, I was hired. We then hired uh, street outreach workers, which is a key component of um, our approach yeah, to dealing with it. Yeah, I want to talk about that yeah. because that's, that's way cool. But yeah. anyway, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. And, and then we have also have a multi-agency uh, intervention team that is um, where service agencies that provide services, substance abuse, um, mental health, education, employment, uh, various types of things. We meet uh, twice a month to case manage the youth and try to provide services for them, remove barriers for them. And um, I think since we've uh, since 2015, we probably touched the life of almost 200 youth. Wow! Uh, involved in street violence for peers. Now, Teresa, these are um, youth and children who have not been in trouble yet, correct? Or are they those who have been in trouble? What, what's... This is a particular, this target is specifically for kids who are at risk for or are in, involved with gang violence. Okay. And at yeah. risk for, we know that they're hanging around and then we got credible information to say that they may be in trouble of mm -hmm. moving into that. But primarily we are working with a target population that's involved in gang violence in the community. Okay, well, okay. How do you, I mean, how do you hear about some child or, you know, youth that, how do you target um, uh, John Smith as getting into this program? I mean, who says, oh, they're at risk, you need to help them? I mean, a little bird, a, a, no, you know. No, no, no. That, so we have, um, this is, like I said, this is an evidence-based uh, strategy. And so we had to come up with data on who are the, who are the kids that are at risk and who are the kids that are involved. So um, we developed criteria based on the data that we found. It's at that time, it was 16 to 24 year olds living right. in certain areas in Fort Pierce. Gotcha. Uh, involved in certain types of crimes. And so the way we got them into the program, uh, in the beginning, it was a little challenging because we were a new program and uh, street outreach, nobody had heard about us. So the youth, um, they were like, I don't know what this program is. I don't know, are you police? I don't know if yeah, I'm right. going to do this. So Irish workers, um, who are one of the key components, are critical in recruiting them. Right. And they come from a similar background. They know Fort Pierce. They know the areas. And they are um, young men and women that have uh, had similar experiences but have turned their lives around and now have dedicated themselves to help the community. So they're critical in actually getting the, <coughs> the youth to join the program. So these children are not, have not already been arrested on probation and have to go through this program, correct? This is, this mm -hmm. is something that's voluntary? Yes. Which is really cool, and, and that's probably why your your Teresa I know is dying to tell us <laughs> some of the statistics. But um, it, I, I'm sure that's part of your success is because they aren't court ordered, they're not mandated, they don't have to be in this program. They have been recruited, as you mm -hmm. say, and um, they want to be part of it, and that's. That's why you're successful. I mean, in my little, mm -hmm. you know. yeah, we we really uh, that's that's our our theory of action in the program that unless a kid or a youth wants the change, 
it's hard for somebody else to change it. And we try to distinguish ourselves from probation and other uh, authority organizations that are involved in these kids' life. And this is voluntary. If you want to help, we're here. And as we have been doing this for five years now, kids know about who we are. They know they've seen the outreach workers provide services. They know what they do. They want it. They want that support in their life. Um, it's not a straightforward success with the kids. There, there's a lot of challenges in their lives and changing behaviors and a lot of times circumstances that right. are beyond our control that, that <clears throat> makes them uh, more vulnerable to engage in activities like this. It's, it's hard for us to change, but they see what we offer. And they lack male role models and, and figures in their life that are positive. So they see what we do and they want it. Um, so that's basically how we're able to retain them in the program. Um, and let's talk about retaining them in the program. Yeah. Um, Teresa, what, um, y y you've been doing this now, what, five years, you say? Yeah, 2014, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well. That's longer we, than... Well, we started the research around 2014. We actually yeah. implemented it 2015. So the community mobilization around yes. it was in 2014. Yes. I was right. hired in, in 15, and, and 2016 is when we started with youth serving them and yes. intervention teams. So. Uh, okay, so, so they get involved. And, and let me give you my summation of what I think you're doing and, and tell me if I'm wrong. It's basically targeting youth who are at risk for gang violence, and you folks go out, talk to them, and if they want help, if they want some guidance, if they want to be diverted, if you will, a mentor is a mentor assigned to them. Is that what this um, outreach? These outreach workers are. Yes, that okay. is exact, that's exactly right. You got it right. Um, the role of the outreach workers is, is literally to go, the, the youth are identified, anybody in the community can refer a youth to the program. It could be a mom, a parent, it could be a public defender right. or, or a DJJ, law enforcement. Schools. Schools are probably one of our biggest sources of referrals. And, and that's what I was going to ask. The school system really partners with you folks to to direct kids? You know, the beauty of this is that we are not able to do this by ourselves. It is a partnership of a number of stakeholders, and of course right. the schools are one of them, but we work with a number of agencies, not only to look at provision of services and how we can address gaps, but a number of agencies also have contributed to uh, funding and sustaining this effort yeah, after yeah. we've received federal dollars. So right. there is significant buy-in in our community of many of the board members that are at the round table to provide financial support mm -hmm. for that. And even the work, um, a lot of the issues that come up from the um, Ignite Youth Alliance, uh, these are the things that we bring to the round table and say, these are recurring themes. These are things that we need to work on. Uh, we need to strengthen our behavioral health services, for example, right. uh, for this population, because what we currently have is not effective. And that's where the round table comes in, in terms of uh, their respective agencies. I identifying how they can sustain it, what their agency can do differently. And that's by design with the comprehensive gang model. We have a, um, there's a component in there that deals with organizational change and development. And a lot of the things that happen with our young people, they're falling through the gaps because there are services that may not be available or they're not right. being identified right. early enough. And so this is an opportunity for us to talk with our key leaders to say, uh, these are vulnerable youth. What can we do a little bit differently? And so there's been a lot of organizational change that we've been involved with in terms of doing things differently uh, to serve this population. Well, okay, I'm going to be devil's advocate for a moment. Mm -hmm. You said you target 16 to 24. Now, it, in my, you know, experience, by 16, if they, if they aren't straight and narrow and got got the right moral compass, et cetera, you, you can just forget about them. Um, I would think mm -hmm. you'd be targeting younger folks, but obviously that, and you guys know, and I, mm -hmm. so I'm leaving it to the professionals, but explain to me and, and mm -hmm. our viewers why that age group. So that's 
how we started out because that's what the data was telling us. Okay. And we used. And that's when they yeah. really turned. Okay. Right. So, okay. and that's where they when they were involved in in the legal system in the juvenile justice system. Right. But since we started the project in outreach workers um, learned more about what's really going on and right. kids that are on the cusp of being involved but not on the radar of law enforcement right we have changed and realized we are working now with kids as young as six years old okay <laughs> so you are so absolutely, I'm right. No, yeah. absolutely right no i mean but but seriously i you know sometimes you know my daddy used to say by three years old, if they don't, if you don't have it, and the child isn't disciplined and respectful, and and at three, that's very young. But that was his, you know, you, you just forget mm -hmm. about him. It's too late, which is not, you know, we've learned through, yeah. that that's not necessarily true. But I, I do see um, the the intervention. Um, mm -hmm. I, I see that in the work we do needs to be sometimes younger. Um, yeah. Uh, it, now, and, and and I got a million questions, but I, I got to ask this: What is the primary? Is it primarily African American? Is it primarily um, males, females? Tell me the, the what's your the, what are your stats so far? So uh, again, uh, re reporting back to to the data, um, where gang violence took place in St. Lucie County at that time was in certain neighborhoods in Fort Pierce, primarily African-American males right. in that 16 to 24 right. uh, range. But since we have worked, we have also learned more about gang activity in the overall of the county. Right. Um, and since, what about Port St. Lucie? Right. So <laughs> we have now expanded our reach to Port St. Lucie to the unincorporated areas of St. Lucie County, and we are serving girls. So we are really... And girls are gang gang members. It's complicated. They're not necessarily... They, it doesn't look like what it looks like for boys when okay, it comes to and gang involvement. Yeah. It does not look like that. Girls are involved on the fringes of gangs. They may be doing, um, supporting them in terms of some criminal activities. You don't often see girls involved in shootings and yeah, that, that kind of thing. You know, that's the point, and that's mm -hmm. what's so beautiful about what you're doing, is the the peripheral people, the the females, for example. Um, you know, in uh, I, you don't have to go into the Seven Eleven and shoot the clerk for the money if you're in the car driving. Mm -hmm him away right, right. you know you're going to be just as culpable and just you know and th to to educate children to realize enabling that behavior being part of it being mm -hmm. around it is just as dangerous and um just to, to separate them before it's too you know yeah. because and that's a group i would think that that you you really are going to have a great opportunity to make a difference mm -hmm. in because mm -hmm. they haven't gone into the 7-Eleven yet. <laughs> right, right, and and oftentimes we see girls as victims in, right. in this as well. Um, simple things like dating, dating a person that might be involved in a gang and living in a different area of town, moving between gang territories. Right. Um, those are 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 creating actually violence too. Um, right, right. So there's there's a lot of different things that we're learning about girls. We're still learning what kind of services that we need to provide for them. But one thing that we see is a lot of sexual trauma. Yeah. In their background. So the the services that we provide is constantly changing based on what we learn. Um, now the roundtable, this initiative doesn't actually provide the services, you folks co collaborate with other agencies, correct, or direct them to those services. Exactly, yes. like, like Teresa yes, said, it's a do. community collaborative. Mm -hmm. This is not only the Roundtables project. We have probably 30 agencies that are part of the, that, the intervention that team. That you refer them right. to. Right, yeah. refer them, to, and we actually have one program that's inside an organization called uh, Friday Night Done Right, 
and we have been engaging young people. And who, what um, program is that? That's through, that's through Southeast Florida Behavioral Health has funded us to actually oh, wow. provide, uh, provide support services and uh, change norms in the community. So we had a wonderful uh, activity where our Friday Night Done Right staff uh, from the round table worked with Night Youth Alliance and they actually designed some masks uh, for the Boys and Girls Club and they loved it. And they, we thought, well, these young people, they're not gonna do that, but uh, they got involved with it and they loved it. So that's one small but good service that we do uh, inside, but most of the services that we provide, we do refer out and we connect them. And, and, and I think what's important is that um, our outreach workers and our programs advocate for our youth to get specific services because some folks might have the attitude that you say, well, we don't want to have anything else to do with them. Right, right. And we right. may offer the support and say, hey, we'll be there with them. Or, you know, can you give this youth one more chance? Or, you know, is there another way that we can work with this youth so that we can have equity in there in terms of services? And equity just means there may be some other things that they need in order to be effective in participating in the respective programs. And so that's our job is to troubleshoot and look at how a number of these kids have been disconnected from school or disconnected from programs, so how can we put them back into the fold right. so they can get the services and supports that they need, and we um, navigate that process. Okay, so how long, what's your longest child that's been in, you know, <laughs> yes. and then I'm gonna, I know you're burning to tell oh, us, no. Teresa, yes. some good statistics, but what, what it, what's the, you know, give us the, the um, you know, kind of poster child mm. for, for this. So we're different than a lot of other programs because Obviously. it's individualized right, right. Uh, programming or services that we do. Each youth receives different services based on their needs. Right. And we really don't take our eyes off them. I, <laughs> I, since we started, I still know what all my, all the youth in the program, where they are. Some of them are in prison and yeah. in, in jail, absolutely. But others have, um, gotten their driver's license. They are able to maintain a an job. apartment. They have a job. They take care of their children. They're living a regular life. We still check on them. <laughs> Maybe we do like every month or every other month, like well, how is he doing? And and sometimes they may need a little extra help, like like I have a bill, let's see if we can, you know, help. Right. So we still, so I know that doesn't necessarily look uh, the traditional way, like no, oh, no, we, no. we've well, graduated the all these kids. Yes. That's the beauty of yes. it. We keep our eye on them because they still live in the same circumstances and right. experience the same risk factors right. for gang involvement. And they're still exposed well, they're there. to they're all They're still the exposed. exposed. Yes. So that's, that's what we do. But we have, we have youth that have uh, completely left the gang and um, are just productive citizens. But we also have kids that are still one foot here and one foot there. Yeah, that and, you have to be on right, top of. But they're not in the streets with guns. They may be doing maybe some other things, but they're not doing that. So the reduction of violence is the key. And the key goal and the main objective of the, of the overall approach. And but, Teresa, now is this the question. Give me some. a perfect team. <laughs> Give I me. Mean, you know, first of all, the comprehensive gang model is an evidence-based practice. Right. And so, uh, you know, it is a. In other it's, words, and let, so people understand when when people say it's evidence-based practice, that that also means, and you're not going to get any money unless you show some success. Absolutely, right. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So. And we implemented an evidence-based practice. And we had an independent evaluator, epidemiologist, uh, pull the, uh, work with us to look at the data. Isn't an um, epidemiologist a, a, I think I, whoa, 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 whoa. And in prevention, in prevention science, you have epis that look at, you know, data. Really? The various aspects wow. of data. Okay, I did, I did absolutely, not know that. Okay. Absolutely, because there's a lot of uh, social <clears throat> determinants of health that are involved right. in what we see with the young people that we're trying to address and, and, and correct as well. But um, we uh, had an evaluation 
um, from between the time of 2014 and 2018, we finished the evaluation last year, and we had an over 17% decrease in uh, gang violence uh, in St. Lucie County. And in the target area, which is the Lincoln Park, Fort Pierce area, right, right. we had an over 40% uh, decrease in gang violence, which lets us know. And what's important, and at the inception of the program, we were ranked in the top 100 most dangerous cities uh, yeah. before the inception. We, um, when we, when we went to have the evaluation, we were no longer on the top 100 list, wow. which is pretty powerful. And we could not have done it without all of the partners working right. together mm -hmm. and determining um, how do we navigate this in our community. And I just want to mention one more thing about you know we think um, our kids you know once uh, they get 16, it's it's all over. Well, there's a there's a percentage of them that are going to continue continue on. Um, I know that some of the research talks about the eight percenters, but there's 92 percent of them that we can turn around right, if we put the right, right services right. in place and the right supports in place, so that they don't have a need, if you will, to be involved mm -hmm. in a gang. So right. I want. I think that's a message that many of our folks want to know. Well, we and you change. and you want to give parents and grandparents and the community hope that yeah. the whole world <laughs> we've had a lot of stuff going on and we don't want to want to just add insult to injury and let them let them think well the whole world's going to heck yes, you know yes. and, and along with that our children you yes, know yes yes that, that they can be saved and they can be helped and yes. there is hope and um well you know i i say this um for people who are who watch the show all the time. I, I'm sure I have some avid viewers, <laughs> but um, we've been doing this forever. But but it's it's true. Um, this community, uh, this circuit, people collaborate. We do. People work together to make, you know, great things happen. And, and part of the reason, uh, personally, this show is so important to me is that it gets the word out because maybe somebody will see it and talk to the aunt or the grandmother or the what it, mother and say, hey, do you know about this? You know, mm -hmm. maybe this would be good for John or mm -hmm. Sarah or mm -hmm. whatever. So give us some, in, <coughs> excuse me, information about what, what, if someone hears about this and wants to get a child involved, what do they do? So you can uh, contact me directly. Um, Calling and, me. And call, how do they get in touch with you? 772-448-7512 <clears throat> is my office phone. And you can also go on the Roundtable's uh, uh, website. And it's just ra roundtable slc dot dot org? Com. Dot dot com. com? Yes. Okay. And, and look for Ignite Youth Alliance. <clears throat> we have a referral form there. <coughs> Fill out the information and, and fax it to me. Um, all the information is on the actual form. Okay. But you can also call the round table at their number if, uh, because that's more, the number is on the site there. Mm -hmm. They can redirect us yes. to well, us. Well, I've got, we're almost out of time, believe it or not. But um, is anyone ever turned away? <laughs> there, I will say this, that there is a lot of, of kids that need mentoring. Uh, kids that aren't involved in gangs, but uh, they still need mentoring. And we serve that specific group, so we actually do turn away kids uh, sometimes. The other thing, right now we have a wait list. We have uh, wow. so many kids that need it and uh, we don't have enough staff to and, actually do it. And real quick, you, uh, if you want to be a mentor, call you guys, right? Yes. And, and you can... We have two open positions right now. We're hiring. We so please positions. call me. <laughs> okay. And thank yes. you both. This was great. Yes, thank, thank you. you. We absolutely appreciate it. Yep.